What's up guys? So welcome to uh, Simple Shit Vlogs, uh, where basically as I write the show and develop the show for the week, um, I just kind of hammer through a handful of articles and I share all of those with you and you get to kind of go through my thought process. This also gives you guys an opportunity to chime in and if there happens to be an article or a subject matter that you're into, then you can let me know and maybe it'll make it into the final show at the end of the week. So without further ado, uh, I picked out about mm, 10 or so articles. I'm going to hammer through those really quickly and um, highlight things that I think are important and kind of keep it moving. Okay, so let's uh, make our way over to the screen here um, and article number one. So article number one. It says, basically, federal agents trick Hamas into sending Bitcoin to Uncle Sam, which I think is hilarious. Now, interesting thing about Bitcoin, for those of you that don't know, cryptocurrency, once that shit's gone, it is gone forever, so you never see it again. Um, there's been a handful of scams recently. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Twitter just got um, hacked recently. So this is really interesting. Criminals have long seen cryptocurrency. Da, da, da. Stealthy way to transfer money, of course. Mostly because it can't be tracked. Um, let's see the details. Um, let's see. The investigation involved the seizure of hundreds of hundreds of cryptocurrency accounts containing more than a million dollars, as well as four Facebook pages that the Islamic State was using to sell phony personal protective equipment. Now here's a question that I have. The investigation involved the seizure of hundreds of cryptocurrency accounts containing more than a million dollars, as well as, I gotta be real. I have to be all the way real. I was under the impression that you shouldn't be able to seize cryptocurrency accounts. So, okay, let's read on. According to the Justice Department, all three terrorist organizations have been encouraging supporters to send them cryptocurrency. This encouragement includes propaganda like the Hamas poster shown below. The poster was included in the department's release. We've added circles to show the Bitcoin solicitation. Uh -huh. It says here, during the covert operation, the website received funds from persons seeking to provide material support to the terrorist organization. However, they instead donated the funds to Bitcoin wallets controlled by the United States, the Justice Department reads. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So basically, the US government, the FBI, has Bitcoin accounts and it's going around scamming the scammers. Well done, US government, well done. On to the next. Uh, Jimmy Lai, okay, so I happen to have a lot of friends that um, either are connected with Hong Kong or um, themselves or they have family there in China so this is actually kind of a big deal a little bit Jimmy Lai says he was arrested on trumped up charges I love the title on that one uh, but basically um, for those of you that don't know the Chinese government often will make up charges and charge people that uh, dissent against the CCP um, or against the government. So if they don't like what you're saying on social media or whatever, they will make up charges and accuse you of something. I mean, laws and the way they handle things in China isn't always on the up and up. Although the way we're working in this country now, I can't really say much. Media tycoon Jimmy Lai says he was arrested on trumped up charges pushing back against the landmark national security legislation that has raised questions about press freedoms and the future of the democracy movement. Oh boy. Um, Hong Kong's in trouble. Uh, let's see more on Hong Kong security law. And um, uh, this is something that I hope to um, explore a little bit bet a little bit more a little bit later on. I'm not in this particular, but um, China, uh, in addition to lie, has have uh, um, arrested quite a few people. It says uh, Lai is the highest profile of more than 20 democracy activists so far arrested in the national um, 
in the national security law, which bars subversion, succession, terrorism, and conclusion with the foreign powers. Hong Kong police on Monday arrested Lai along with his sons and senior executives and senior executives of his media company, Holy Shit, Next Digital LTD, on suspicion of collusion under the security law imposed by China on June 30th. So basically, they make it up. You say something about them they don't like, they arrest you. New law that they passed in Hong Kong, um, if I'm not mistaken, the woman that the United the US just put sanctions on allowed for this national security law to be passed in Hong Kong via China and the United States actually just sanctioned her specifically by name um, because of this law. So um, I will be breaking this down in a, in a full episode. Next, uh, Michael Cohen offers a glimpse of upcoming book. It's awesome. Okay. So basically, um, it says uh, Michael Cohen has released the forward, uh, forward of his upcoming book Thursday, teasing what he claims to be behind the scenes expose of his acts in President Donald Trump, as President Donald Trump's fixer, from stiffing contractors on business deals to lying about extramarital affairs to the president's attempts to insulate himself from a world of into a world of Vladimir Putin. I must say this is likely to be why Donald Trump is acting so irrationally. Cohen says, he says, in some ways I knew him better than even his family did because I bore witness to the real man in strip clubs, shady business meetings, and in the unguarded moments when he revealed who he really was, a cheat, a liar, a fraud, a bully, a racist, a predator, a con man. Oof. Ouch. Ouch, Donald. Ouch. Um, Michael Cohen's book is a fan fiction. He readily admits to lying routinely, but expects people to believe him. So now he can make money from book sales. It's unfortunate that the media exploiting this sad, desperate man's attack on President Trump, White House Deputy Press Secretary Brian Morgenstern says. Uh, guess what, bro? You're in trouble, Donald. Next. Uh, oh. <laughs> So the individual that is in the process of trying to uh, defund the post office is now requesting a mail-in ballot for Florida in a crazy, crazy hypocritical twist. Let's talk about it. President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have both requested mail-in ballots for the upcoming Florida primaries despite the president's frequent criticism of mail-in ballot systems in the U.S. <sighs> Donald, Donald, Donald. I don't have to go into that. I mean, if you're not sure what that means, then comment below and I will break this. I'm going to break this down anyways, but yeah, I'm not going to waste a whole bunch of time on that. And last but not least on this one, because I mean, these are going to be kind of fast. Um, mm, oh, well, actually, let's talk about it. Let's see. These are felonies. Lawyers react in horror to the reports of post office removing mail sorting machines. So, 45, this president, and I don't generally try not to speak his name, is while he's requesting ballots from Florida. He's also circumventing the process and he is trying to um, undermine or kneecap the USPS. And for those of you that don't know, the United States Postal Service is one of the longest running branches of the United States government. All the way back to the Pony Express, all the way back to the very beginning of this country, the post office has been around. And it also has a 90% uh, approval rating from basically all of the United States, meaning that out of all the government entities that exist, the post office is near 90%. Everyone is very happy with it. The process of removing those machines has stoked fears that President Donald Trump and his allies in the executive branch are intentionally sabotaging mail operations in order to diminish the capability of the U.S. Postal Service to sort and deliver mail and ballots in a timely fashion for the 2020 election. I'm going to go ahead and read this quote also. 
because I think it's pretty darn important. Tampering with the mail and federal elections are crimes no matter who does it. A criminal defense attorney, Tor Eklund, told Law and Crime, just because you run the bank doesn't mean you get to steal the money. This reeks of mail and election fraud, ske the scheme to defraud using the removal of mail sorting machines without, without reason as a means to inhibit mail in voting. These are felonies and should be investigated and persecuted appropriately. So I'm gonna also break this down in a longer form because this is really important. Uh, my mother was a postmaster of my hometown. So I have an intimate knowledge of the USPS and this actually affects me in a crazy way. And I actually had a really cool conversation with my mom about it to kind of like fill in the blanks. So what I wasn't able to find, um, I was able to talk to her and kind of um, understand some of the nuances of what they're doing. So I'll be breaking that down this next week also. Claim ties Trump resort to Peninsula coronavirus death. No way. Okay, claim filed last week alleges that Peninsula limo driver who died from the coronavirus contracted the illness from Brazilian diplomats who had been guests at President Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. The San Jose Mercury News reports. For those of you that are still thinking that coronavirus is a um, is a uh, hoax it's pretty simple next ah why are we still policing candidates um this is actually really simple also uh because they these are some of the frivolous charges that they put on black people and and trap them and get them and put them in jail so that's why we're still policing cannabis. I don't need to read this stupid article to know that. I mean, for God's sakes. Um, in fact, the funny thing about that is, uh, and I might talk about it, uh, Jim Belushi was just on Colbert and apparently he just bought a farm in Oregon and started um, growing weed and uh, now has some weed products. And I just think it's really interesting that these millionaires and billionaires can like buy up land, start farms, and then they can start growing and go into business in the very same business that um, are locking up a lot of our youth, mostly African American and Hispanic. And the reality is, is that blacks and Latinos don't smoke weed any more than white people do. Black and Hispanics are just the ones that get arrested. So. And again, I'm not saying anything that's not fact, it's not provable, you can prove it, the numbers are there. So it's pretty simple why we are still criminalizing marijuana. Uh, the question is how long are we gonna continue to do it? Moving right along. <sighs> fact check, Kamala Harris doesn't want to institute Sharia law. Why are we still doing this racist 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 stuff let's just do it like this harris has not made any public comments indicating her support for the institution of sharia law you racist assholes oh yeah by the way kamala harris is also a natural born u.s citizen and eligible to serve as president our racist in chief has already gone down that road. But Cuba Gooding Jr. prosecutors say 30 women have come forward with groping accusations. So it seems Cuba Gooding is a creep. <sighs> believe that the video unequivocally will show that Cuba committed absolutely no crime. And we expect this case to be dismissed in one day. I haven't seen the video. I think there is a video out there. You know, it's the whole Bill Cosby effect. If there's like one or two, but when there's 30, <sighs> that's a rough one. Um, Cuba, man, getting me too Um, Oh, man, a lot, of, a lot of Trump today. This guy's really in the news a lot, more than I really want to deal. Um, and none of it's good, and it's all reruns. We already know what this is. 
he attacked AOC, he attacked Kamala, he attacked uh, Pelosi. Look, the guy is a racist, he is a sexist, he is a xenophobe. I mean, he's all the things. I don't even know why we're still... How is it that this idiot can be president of the United States? That's what I want to know. Like, that shit is simple. I feel like you have to, should be have to take a test or something. Like, this guy's a moron. Like, I wouldn't hire him to, like, pick up dog poop. Clay County Sheriff. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, maybe you guys uh, do or don't recall, there was a, this guy, Sheriff, and there's a video of all these sheriffs standing in the line. And this guy was, like, talking about, if you come to this county and you blah, 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 we'll come there and I'm alive. We'll, do, do, we'll give you all you can handle. This guy. This guy about three or four weeks ago and it turns out that he had a ex-lover let's let's see what they say here what does it say we can go over this one say Clay County Sheriff's Department da, 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 on felony and misdemeanor charges following a year-long investigation into a sex scandal where a sheriff ordered his staff to arrest his mistress oh sheriff Oh, Sheriff. So it says, King's warrant for Daniel's arrest included a felony charge of tampering with evidence and three misdemeanor counts of giving false information to law enforcement. This is the Sheriff. Let's read that again. King's warrant for Daniel's arrest includes a felony charge of tampering with evidence and three misdemeanor counts of giving false information to law enforcement. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, what did he say? Quote for him, from, from him, the guy just got arrested. Clay Sheriff says he'll deputize every gun owner if deputies can't handle the protesters. Wow. Anyways, I would say good luck, but uh, go fuck yourself. And ooh, last but not least, let's get into tech a little bit. This uh, is a little more relevant to San Francisco. Pinterest employees plan to walk out following multiple discrimination allegations. I mean, look, without even going deep into this article, for those of you that just don't know, um, you know, in the Bay Area, where uh, it being the hub of tech, a lot of these tech companies just don't, aren't very diverse, and they don't work very hard at being diverse, and they might say that they very, they don't have any qualified applicants, but I happen to know that even if you are qualified, they don't really treat you very well as a minority. Um, and, you know, obviously being a, a woman or a minority is ends up being a little bit of an issue. So um, this doesn't surprise me at all, but let's, but, oh, but there is a statement in here that I think is really important that I really want to that I want to read to you and um, basically it's just one of those statements that is the reason why I'm doing this in the first place and let's talk about it all right let's look at this it says a Pinterest spokesperson told Gizmodo in a statement by email that the company's leadership and employees have a shared goal of building and fostering a company we can all be proud of essentially what the fuck does that mean like really what does that even mean more, there's more, there's more. We have, we know we have real work to do and recognize that it's our job to build a diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment for everyone, the spokesperson says. We respect and hear the employees who want to see a clear commitment to action and we will ensure an open dialogue that leads to progress to make Pinterest the, work, the place we all know it can be basically nothing let's see we know we have real work to do okay sweet and we recognize it's our job to build a diverse equity equitable and inclusive environment for everyone we we know that that's our job I'm not saying we're going to do it we just know that that's our job we respect and hear the employees who want to see clear commitment to action so we respect we hear what you're saying but we're basically not going to do anything. And we will ensure an open dialogue that leads to the progress to make Pinterest the place we all know it can be. So we'll listen to you, but we'll let you say something, but we're not going to make any promises and we're not going to change anything. 
and we hope that it can be better in the future. So essentially not saying anything at all. How do these assholes get away with this shit? In their petition addressed to sell women employees are calling for transparency about promotion and retention data, transparency related to the compensation packages and committed to a diverse goal for the third layer of reporting to the CEO. So basically they're wanting information because they know they're being screwed. These are not isolated cases. The petition states um, states of the former employees who allege gender and racial discrimination of Pinterest. Instead, they are representative of an organizational culture that hurts all Pinterest workers and keeps us all from achieving our mission of bringing everyone the inspiration to create a life they love. We recognize that Pinterest has been a leader in diversity and inclusive hiring with the diversity goals for new hires. This has become clear that it's not enough, clearly, that diversity goals need to be applied from the top down, not just from the bottom up, which is more double talk. Essentially, it's not saying much of anything. So, you know, part of the reason why I started this vlog, started this page, is to address things like this. Um, these companies that do the double talk, lawyers speak, talk around the issues, talk around what's happening, and never actually do anything. Um, so, Hopefully we shine a little bit of light on this and Pinterest, just like the rest of them, um, end up either making changes or suffering the consequences. So anyways, um, that is it for the, the evening. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me in the comments, share. If you have any um, ideas or things that, you know, this is going to be an evolving kind of vlog. This is always going to be changing and morphing into stuff. So. Um, whenever I like the vibe or the way something is working, I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to make adjustments and change things on the fly. So if there's something that you really enjoyed, if there's something that you absolutely hated, let me know in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and all the things. Um, Erica Badu said it best. I'm an artist, and I'm sensitive about my shit. I'll have you guys later.